Welcome, in this video we would like to show you some temporary bindings of a Capita Selecta master course for industrial design engineering. Um, we created a decision making model uh, for product lifecycle management and product portfolio management and uh, we would like to use ontologies as their interface between these two. So uh, what, we, what we want to show you in this demo are uh, the findings, both positive and uh, disadvantages of creating ontologies from, in this case, SOLIDWORKS CAT models. Um, in this demo, we will not use this complex model. We will use a, a little bit more simple model just to do it a little bit faster. Um, so what we will do is firstly use assembly. Uh, we will convert this uh, in a step model and with a translator we will create a XML file. Uh, the XML file we will import in Protege and export a OEL file which we can use in Gephi as a network. So first of all I'm going to open the uh, assembly file. In this case it is quite an easy uh, simple file just a few cubes and uh, I just added some features such as thin walls and holes and chamfer and fillets and what I'm gonna do is create a step file from this assembly in this case I want to create a step APA214 um, because I can use this within my converter um, furthermore I want to uh, use a STP file uh, because a step file um, is not recognized at my translator so this when this is exported I can close the window and open my translator so in my translator I can just open uh, the assembly file and I want to create an XML file in this case I'm gonna call this uh, assembly1.xml and I want to create a log as well in this case I'm gonna call it logbook.log and then select the AP14 what we just exported from SOLIDWORKS um, then run so uh, what is good to mention is there are differences between the CAT systems even the AP14 is different between for example SOLIDWORKS and Solid Edge. Uh, so if you're going to use that, make sure um, that you pay attention to that. So then uh, the model is converted and I'm going to open in this case Protege. Uh, make sure to use Protege 3.5 because you can add a XML tab within this Protege version. Um, to do this, I'm going to create, of course, is an, uh, first a new file, in this case an OAL RDF just next next and uh, in this case I'm going to use the OAL full then next and finish um, so what I have to do then is go to the uh, OAL tab at the top and just wait a second before it's loaded and then I go to preferences and at the tabs I can select in this case XML tab if it's not there, make sure you install the plugin first. At the XML tab, I can browse to the uh, XML folder, uh, XML file, and in this case, the assembly one, and I'm gonna import it. And what we will see is that Protege will create several classes, and uh, between these classes, there are relations as well. So I will show the, you this in a moment when it is loaded. And when we go to the OAL classes, we can see a lot of classes and most of them have numbers. So they are really hard to interpret. And, um, but at the bottom, we can see quite a lot of classes which are related to, in this case, the uh, uh, geometry and of course the SOLIDWORKS um, values such as uh, fill area and phase geometry. So what we can see here as well is that there are um, different relations between these. Uh, for example, we can see as well at uh, product relations that um, in this case Protege recognizes some of these values. So what we want to do now is save the project and um, 
first of all this will not happen what I uh, will not work what I do now but I just want to show you this because when I'm gonna save it and of course I create an OEL file as well this is actually what we want for um, Gephi uh, and when I want to export it I get a error in this case because of there's an exception class at a Yina shared exception so this is related to some uh, Java language what I found so what I want to do now uh, to prevent this and actually save the file is use a native writer and when I do this I can save the project again in this case of course in the same folder and I have to give it a name in this case project one and when I click OK Protege starts um, saving this so this will take a short moment and I will come back to you when it's finished. Okay, Protégé is finished and um, what is worth to mention is in the folder we can find a OAL file of our project. And um, when you take a look at the size, it is really large, it's almost 200 MB. Uh, so you can actually not open it just right now. What you can do, uh, just to take a look at the code itself, is uh, upload it to a, a web domain and then you can observe the code. So I will show you an example of one of the codes what we actually found. In this case I go to the website where it is on. And you have to wait for a moment because it will take quite a while to load. So in the meantime, I start Gephi, and in Gephi, I can import the OAL file, and I'm going to use the semantic web import to do this. So when Gephi is loaded, I first create a new project. And uh, when that's done, I go to the semantic web import, click on add, and in this case, browse to the folder with the OAL file. Oh, this is the wrong one. Let's do it again. In this case, the OAL one. So I'm going to import this one and then click run. This will not take too long and then at my graph I can see some stuff is going uh, happens here. So what I want to do now is create a more understandable network using an algorithm. I use the uh, Yifan Hu algorithm and when I run this you can actually see there is created something. Um, so what we can see here is a really small web and it depends on your models and on some settings what you do what you will find in this web um, and one of the hardest things what we found is that it is really hard to interpret what actually happens here because we have mostly all kind of codes like a thing with a number and um, we can even see that when I zoom we can see here another network so this means not everything is connected to each other so when you go to the data library and you compare the amount of objects in this case what we can see here the nodes and the edges and we compare this with the uh, actual amount of classes in Protégé there's quite a difference in the amount so one of the things what we found is when I create a new file and I show you this again don't save and I go to my web import and I add one of these files in this case a download folder and in my folder the OAL1 and I go to my query I can see there is a limit so what I tried is deleting this and adding larger values but still when I run this fail, uh, run this file and import it I will actually see that the results are the same again there is this web and the second uh, smaller one and some little ones with actually two dots and a line between so this is not what we want there's no useful information in this 
So uh, in the meantime, the code in my uh, web browser is done. So this is an example of the OAL code. And when you go through it, you can see it is really large. And um, there's not a lot of useful information in it. And there seems actually some gaps between them. So um, this is not really useful information. So what we found, so there were a few other options. What we could try is uh, use a export, in this case OAL, uh, but use a native writer as OAL as well. Uh, of course, I'm going to save it in the same folder. In this case, I'm going to use uh, call it project two, just to separate it from the previous one and then uh, export it. So this will take a while as well. So we'll come back to you when it's finished. Okay, then I go to the folder to just compare the actual values again. So in this case, I can actually see the project two OEL and the project one OEL are the same size. So this is not really promising for some differences, but maybe when we import this in Gephi, so let's create a new file. In this case, I want to remove the previous one and add the new one. Uh, so in my project folder, I'm going to select the project two OAL and by selecting this one and run it, I can see there are just a few nodes. Actually, there, there, there are just 30 and 28. So um, even when I do this again, uh, I can just actually go to the data library just to show you. There are just a few nodes. So even in the graph, we will not see something very special again. Um, I will just complete it to just show you the results. Again, there is the same graph, nothing new. Uh, so what I can try again is uh, go to the import again. And just remove the amount of limit what was set by the uh, query. In this case, uh, I'm going to go to the folder again, the OAL. And then in query, oh, this one was actually removed already. So um, unfortunately, there are not really useful results from this right now. And we hope in any further progress that we can identify more useful results because it could be very useful within the decision making model. So in this video, we showed you uh, the findings of our uh, assignment for a master course. And uh, thank you for watching and see you next update.